How long have you been doing, how long have you had an interest in photography? I've had an interest in photography since I was four years old. the storybook that was called People Need People that I got probably shouldn't have kept from my elementary school but I did but it had this one little story in there of this little girl and her dad who went to the mountains with her camera um, and from there I was hooked I think that um, that we diminish the power of story you know we can be presented with facts we can be presented with circumstances and not be bothered by it at all not be affected by it at all but when someone places an image in front of us um, that has been taken, that has captured a moment in time, that has captured an emotion in time. Um, there's no denying what that person is going through. If you see someone, someone's face crying out in anguish, you see um, pictures of the concentration camps um, in Nazi Germany, you see pictures of people hanging from trees during slavery times or post-slavery when lynchings were, were a thing. Like You can't deny the agony and the pain, the suffering of people. Um, and in the same way, um, victory, when people, someone's rejoicing about something. I mean, you think about the iconic images uh, over over time, you can't deny emotion that you see in a still image that you would miss in other ways. What speaks to you in the aspect of black and white photography? Uh, black and white photography really takes away all the distractions to me um, from what is actually happening in an image. Uh, color photography, there's just a lot to see. There's a lot to, to behold. Colors are distracting depending on uh, what you're drawn to. If you're a blue person and you're looking at whatever's blue, if something is, you know, bright red, red automatically um, implies that there's some so, some sort of emergency or something that's taking place. And so color color has all of these um, these emotions that are tied to it. But black and white really gives you just what's there. Um, there's nothing left to um, to distract you from what's actually happening. And for me, that's the power of black and white. Um, most people, although we have colorful eyes, you know, you, you see the emotion of someone's of, of what someone's experiencing uh, in black and white. And there's nothing that takes that away, especially if you're looking at um, you going through through a museum or, or um, printing the types of black and white, the gel, the gel, and the silver gel uh, that's printed through black and white is just powerful for me. They, every time I flip through a book or go back to look um, through the image, it really lets me know how much of in the moment I am when I'm taking photography. Photography isn't something I just, oh, I'm going to take my camera out and snap today. Um, it's very much something that I feel. Uh, and so in those moments, I'm actually able to go back and look at what I've taken at the end of a day. Because I don't take a photo and then look at the screen. Um, I don't look at my photos until the end of the day. And so when I go and I look back through what I've taken, it's like, wow. I took that and I and it does take me back. It, it it makes me ask questions. What was I feeling in that moment uh, when I took that picture? And sometimes um, it's an extremely emotional process for me. Um, some of the places that I've been in Ferguson, in Baltimore, even uh, in Flint around the water crisis stuff, uh, going back and looking at those images, seeing the faces of the people, uh, it affects me in a very real way, but it also propels me uh, to continue the work. Um, for me, I very much am after finding and capturing the story that's happening in the moment. If everybody's been uh, talking about it and everybody's covered, if there's nothing new to say about it, then I don't want to be there. I want to be there right when something's happening, as it's unfolding. I don't want people to have an opportunity to to be staged. I don't want them to know I'm coming. That's what portrait photographers do. Um, I can do that, but that's not that's not what my passion is. Um, and so, in the moment when I'm when I'm in a place. Um, I try also to become a part of the culture, to become a local, if you will. Um, I don't don't stay in fancy hotels. I don't go outside of the neighborhood that I'm covering. Don't go outside of the village that I'm covering. I try to be as much of a local as I can so that I can feel what they're feeling um, to whatever degree that's possible. That art imitates life or life imitates art? I think it depends on the viewpoint of the artist. For me, um, art and I won't even say imitates. I think that that art represents life. Um, I think that when when I look back through my photos and I see what I know, you know, is a piece of fine art photography. I know that the only reason for me anyway is that it is it can be considered fine art is because I have as much as possible accurately depicted what I saw with my lens. Um, it's why I don't do a lot of editing. It's why I don't do a lot of manipulation. I want to see 
um, reflected in my image, the beauty of what I saw with my raw eye. And I want people not to go into a place like India and only think of the pretty images that have been shown to us for tourists. But I want you to see the beauty of life, even in the midst of suffering. Right. And I think that's what that's what was so powerful for me about the Faces of Innocence project is that even though those children are very clearly suffering, don't know where their next meal for the next few days is going to come from, don't have clean water necessarily available to them, but they have like this uncanny joy that's contagious um every single one of them and so um i think that art represents life if we do it well i think that art represents life